Good afternoon. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill, and this is Evening Prayer for Monday, August the 28th. It's the 13th week after Pentecost, and week one in the Psalm Cycle. And thanks for joining me. O oh God, come to my assistance. Make haste to help me. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, O God, I put my trust in you. Alleluia. Psalm 7, and please recite it with me. Alleluia, O God, I put my trust in you. Save me from them that persecute me, lest they tear me to pieces like a lion, while there is none to deliver me. O God, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my hands, if I have repaid evil to a friend, or plundered the one that is my enemy without cause, then let the enemy persecute me, let the enemy take me, and tread my life into the ground, and lay my honor in the dust. Rise, O God, in your anger, lift yourself against the rage of my enemies, and awake for me the justice you have decreed. Let the congregation of the people gather round, for their sakes return on high, and judge the nations. Judge me, O God, according to my righteousness. Judge me according to my integrity. Let the wickedness of the evildoers come to an end. Establish the just, for your righteousness tests our hearts and minds. You are my defense who saves the upright. You judge the righteous and are angry with the wicked. If they do not repent, you will wet your sword. You have bent your bow and made it ready. You've also prepared for them the instruments of death. You ordain your arrows against the persecutors. Behold those who labor with wickedness and have conceived evil and brought forth a lie. They have made a deep pit and have themselves fallen into the ditch which they dug. Their malice shall return to them, and their violent ways shall fall on their own heads. I will praise you, my God, according to your righteousness. I will sing praise to your name, Most High. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, O God, I put my trust in you. Alleluia. The first book of Kings, chapter 1, beginning at verse 5. Now Adonijah, the son of Haggath, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen, and fifty men to run before him. His father had never at any time reprimanded him by asking, Why have you done thus and so? He was also a very handsome man and he was born next after Absalom. He conferred with Joab, son of Zeruiah, and with the priest Abithar, and they supported Adonijah. But the priest Zaduk and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and the prophet Nathan, and Shammah and his companions, David's own warriors, did not side with Adonijah. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, and fatted cattle by the stone Zohar, which is beside En Rogel. And he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the royal officials of Judah. But he did not invite the prophet Nathan, or Benaiah, or the warriors, or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan said to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, Have you not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggath, has become king? and our Lord David does not know it. Now therefore come, let me give you advice so that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go in at once to King David and say to him, Did you not, my lord the king, swear to your servant, saying, Your son Solomon shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then is Adonijah king? Then while you are still there speaking with the king, I will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went to the king in his room. The king was very old. Abishag, the Shunammite, was attending the king. 
Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance to the king, and the king said, What do you wish? And she said to him, My lord, you swore to your servant by the Most High your God, saying, Your son Solomon shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne. But now suddenly Adonijah has become king, though, though you, my lord the king, do not know it. He has sacrificed oxen, fatted cattle, and sheep in abundance and has invited all the children of the king, the priest Abithar, and Joab, the commander of the army. But your servant Solomon, he is not invited. But you, my lord the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you to tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it will come to pass when my lord the king sleeps with his ancestors that my son Solomon and I will be counted offenders. While she was still speaking with the king, the prophet Nathan came in. The king was told, Here is the prophet Nathan. When he came in before the king, he did obeisance to the king with his face to the ground. Nathan said, My lord the king, have you said Adonijah shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne? For today he has gone down and has sacrificed oxen, fatted cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's children. Joab, the commander of the army, and the priest Abithar, who are now eating and drinking before him, and saying, Long live King Adonijah. But he did not invite me your servant, and the priest Zadok, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon. Has this thing been brought about by my lord the king, and you have not let your servants know who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? David answered, Summon Bathsheba to thee. So she came into the king's presence, stood before the king. The king swore, saying, As the Most High lives, who has saved my life from every adversity, as I swore to you by the Most High, the God of Israel, your son Solomon shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. So will I do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground and did obeisance to the king and said, May my lord, King David, live forever. Here, is, here ends the lesson. And now let us offer our prayers and petitions for those who are strangers and travelers, that we may welcome them as Christ, and for those who are alone. For those who are sick, especially Robert, that they may be protected, find courage and hope in your mercy. For prisoners and captives, for the persecuted and for refugees, that they may be judged in righteousness and find freedom in your truth. For those who died, especially Sarah, brothers Stephen Michael, William, and brother Stephen Edward, that together with Francis and Claire and all your saints, they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We thank you for bringing us safely to the end of this day, and we thank you for all the blessings you've granted us. Deliver us from hardness of heart. Forgive us our sins and offenses, that your light may show forth from us. for all who seek you, tender God, that they may find and be found. That your will may be done in all that we undertake to the bene benefit of ourselves, our families and friends, the church and all people. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. O oh, beloved God, we put our trust in you and pray that you save us from all that persecute us. Put an end to all wickedness and establish your justice in all the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless Jesus, my soul, and may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia.